Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between West Systems G-Flex Epoxy and Combat Abrasives Rogue Epoxy. Now, the last time I did a test like this, it was between G-Flex and BSI Mid-Cure Epoxy. The results of that test were that both epoxies were suitable for knife making, however, the G-Flex Epoxy did hold up its reputation and come out as the gold standard of knife maker's epoxy, like everyone says that it is. But today, we're gonna to be putting it against the Rogue Epoxy, so we'll see if the reigning champ can win this fight. Now, I wanna note that the Rogue Epoxy I received for free with my last belt order from Combat Abrasives. I was ordering some wide three inch belts for my surface grinder, and they threw in the epoxy so that I can test it. So I want to note that and also say that I will not be light or I will not be biased on the testing of the Rogue Epoxy. I truly wanna know which of these two epoxies are best suited for knife makers, or at least for my needs. With that, I'm gonna get into the preparation of the testing and also the testing itself coming up with my narration. All right, so the first part here, we're gonna be preparing our pieces for this test. I have two pieces of mild steel that I put quarter inch holes in and two pieces of micarta uh, that I put quarter inch holes in so that we can grab onto these pieces. The two pieces of mild steel, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them over to my surface grinding attachment and make them super flat. We're gonna bring them up to around a 120 grit belt finish. The micarta was brought up to a 60 grit uh, sandpaper finish and flat. So I'm gonna mark off how far up the micarta will come on both of those pieces of metal, and then I'll make sure to label them so I don't get everything mixed up. Cleaning the pieces, uh, we used some alcohol, some rubbing alcohol. We went ahead and cleaned all four of these pieces. Then I mixed up the epoxy for about 40 seconds on each different epoxy and applied it to both sides, trying not to leave any large globs on either side. And then I utilize one spring clamp on each sample to hold it uh, shut. So as you see here, this is the uh, combat abrasives epoxy. I get a nice coating on both pieces and then uh, put a spring clamp on there. The other test I did was on uh, some pieces of angle iron and I was gonna be epoxying metal bolts onto them. So I went back over to the surface grinder and I put a nice surface finish on the piece of the angle iron that I will be attaching the bolts onto. To get the bolt heads nice and uh, flat, I took them on to the belt sander and screwed them in to a three to one block. These are uh, 3 8 by 16 bolts. And then I got a nice square flat head on every one of the bolts. I then just scribed out uh, where I'll be putting these bolts. And then I have two different samples there, one for the G-Flex and one for the CA. So this is about how much epoxy I'd put on the bolt head. And then I gently uh, apply the bolt to the top of the angle iron there and you can see I have some squeeze out on each one. I did my best to apply the same amount of pressure and the same technique on all six of these bolts. After we have the bolts epoxied and the, uh, the first uh, testing media epoxied up, we give it about 24 hours to cure, and then we're gonna start our testing. So the first test I did was with the first sample here, I screwed it into my workbench, attached a chain to the bottom, and then we're doing some drop testing with weights. So we start off with a two and a half pound weight, uh, which they handled pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to see how well it can handle a shearing effect. Uh, this ended up not being the best testing method, uh, but it, it did show that it could take some, some serious abuse, I think. We got up to about 15 pounds, and then the epoxy didn't bust, but the micarta did. So we're gonna have to uh, test this a different way. Did the same thing with the CA. Uh, we worked up two and a half, five, and then when I got to the 10 pounds, same thing happened, the uh, micarta busted. So this is not indicative of one epoxy being better than the other. 
It's just how strong the micarta was. So I end up redoing these test samples uh, that you'll see in a little bit. But while I was here, I went ahead and broke off the metal from the test sample just so I can see uh, what the adhesion looked like uh, on the two pieces. And this is that there. You can see uh, the difference between the CA and the G-Flex there. All right, onto the bolt test. I didn't have an inch pound torque wrench and the lowest setting on my torque wrench is 30 foot pounds. And this uh, proved to be way too heavy. So I tried it and it, it was way too strong. So I went over to my drill and my drill has these numbered, uh, numbered ratings on it, one to 15. So I just figured I'll use that. So I started off with a one and then I worked all the way up to a 15. Now this first test sample you're seeing here is the Combat Abrasives Rogue Epoxy and it actually got all the way to number 15. Uh, so that's a pretty, pretty strong uh, connection there to the angle iron. When I was going over to the G-Flex, I actually busted off this first one with the torque wrench just to be fair. And then I moved on to the uh, second bolt here, do, utilizing the same process, and I got up to a number 8 on my drill before it busted. And then I did some hanging tests. I started off with 5 pounds and then worked my way up uh, incrementally all the way to a 25 pound test. And this is where the G-Flex actually broke off from the angle iron here with 25 pounds. And just to get crazy, I ended up moving up to uh, 35 pounds on the CA. And the CA seems to support more weight when it comes to a metal to metal connection. So I was actually pretty surprised it held this. I mean, that's a pretty big moment arm around uh, that, that epoxy joint there. And then I just broke these off uh, with an impact driver uh, just so I can see how it looked uh, in between the bolt head and the angle iron. So we're going to move on to the third test that I ran. And on this third test, I'm using the same type of setup as the first. That is two pieces of mild steel that have been surface ground and two pieces of micarta. However, this time I actually want to see if I can make the joint of epoxy fail, not the micarta itself, because that's what this testing is all about, figuring out which epoxy is better. So I'm going to be using a luggage scale, a piece of chain, a bucket, and some salt pellets. I found that attaching the assembly to my bench in this orientation uh, was way less advantageous for the epoxy joint, so it's putting a lot of strain on the joint itself. I would then hang off the scale, tear it, and pour salt pellets so I can incrementally increase the weight. One bucket full of salt was not enough. I ended up putting two 10 pound weights into the bottom of the bucket first and then pouring the salt pellets into the bucket. The first test was done with the CA Rogue Epoxy and it busted at around 4.9 pounds plus the 20 pounds in the bucket. So it busted at around 25 pounds. Next up is the G-Flex epoxy. I go ahead and I put the 20 pounds in the bottom of the bucket and then start pouring. So we passed up the 4.9 pound mark, actually getting it all the way up to around 18 pounds before it busted here. And it, it took a little delay to bust, but it busted at about 38 pounds total. Alrighty, so those were my tests. Now, I know those tests aren't perfect tests, but I think they're good enough to give us an idea of how well those epoxies performed against each other. Before I get into some details, I wanna note that I think that both epoxies are suitable for knife making, and they have very good reviews from the community, both of them do. So I think they're time-tested products to this point, and they both could be suitable for knife making. However, I think that they do have some strengths and weaknesses that are worth discussing. First of all, when it comes to a metal to metal connection, I think that the combat abrasives epoxy, or the Rogue, is a better choice. So these, uh, it would lend itself well to bolsters and pins and things of that nature whenever you're connecting metal to metal. And this was made obvious by the bolt and angle iron test that we did earlier in the video. It took way more force to remove the bolts from the angle iron with the combat abrasives epoxy. When it comes to micarta 
attaching to steel, it looks like the G-Flex was a better uh, performer in that case. You can actually see on both samples that we attached the micarta to the steel with G-Flex, there was a little bit of micarta left behind on the steel after a test. And I think that this is indicative of it being a better grabber, so to speak, when it comes to attaching um, micarta on the steel. So with that, I will leave it to the comment section to hash out which one's better. If you like the way I tested these, go ahead and comment below. If you didn't like the way I tested these, also let me know below and maybe I can do better next time. And while I have you here, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.